beta weight is. And this, I'm just going to point out these are the unstandardized beta weights. Uh, it corresponds to the column of unstandardized coefficients, B. And then the standard errors associated with those are in the next column. And then we get the standardized beta weights. Now, depending on your discipline, standardized coefficients, beta, uh, so in the behavioral sciences, people focus almost exclusively on standardized beta weights. Boy, as in other disciplines like economics and finance, people tend to focus more on unstandardized beta weights. Uh, so it depends on your discipline. What you can see here, though, is there's not very much difference between unstandardized and standardized, and that's because the standard deviations are roughly similar, as I demonstrated in the descriptives table. And so because the standard deviations are roughly similar, uh, you get something similar. You get comparable beta weights in both cases. Because in the standardized case, they are exactly the same. The standard deviation is 1 for all these variables interpreted in this context. The beta weights help us arguably to interpret the unique contribution of each variable as a predictor of the in, of the dependent variable and so we can say that djw and arg are roughly con comparable contributors to the regression equation uh, but much lower is CIN and MA, AMH, and there you go, that why the F value was not really, uh, why F value is coming down because these are really small beta weights. Uh, but we can see it's actually negatives. Uh, CIN kind of, it doesn't contribute in the same way as the other uh, variables. So in DJW, we can see that higher levels of of premium associated with DJW are associated with higher levels of AFI premium and you expect that kind of thing and that's happening for all of them but in this case CIN has the opposite contribution when it's trading at a more premium uh, AFI is, is seems to be trading at a at a discount relatively speaking just in, in um, you know on average here we've got the T values and the significance values associated with our beta weights, which also correspond to the part and partial correlations we're in another part of the table. So we can see that all these are statistically significant because they're all less than 0 0.05. All right, so all these beta weights are statistically significant. And that's true for the uh, unstandardized and standardized. Then we've got the confidence intervals associated with the unstandardized beta weights. I think in some cases um, it's important to, to report the unstandardized beta weights, particularly in this case where the sample size isn't very big. Uh, you can see there's a pretty big fluctuation here. So um, for the unstandardized beta weight for DJW, which is 0.32, um, with 95% confidence, we can say that it's somewhere between 0.23 and 0.41. So there's variability there. Uh, we've got the zero order correlations, which is just the Pearson bivariate correlations, plain Jane correlations. Then we've got the partial correlations and the part correlations. Now, I'll start with the part correlations. The part correlations are the correlations between the independent variable. So in this case, DJW, which is the first row, DJW has a part correlation of 0.33. And uh, that means that independent of the variance shared between DJ, DJW and the other four independent variables, what is the correlation between DJW and AFI, the dependent variable? So that correlation is 0.33. All right, so that's a part correlation. I'm going to do another video on part and partial correlations. So you just need to know, just basically, that's what this table is reporting. Some people argue you should interpret the part correlations more than you should the beta weights. And uh, I'm not so sure I agree with that. Uh, I think that's a whole debate, and maybe I'll make another video about how, why I don't think that's true. But at least you've got uh, the option in SPSS to look at your part correlations. I still think they're useful and very informative pieces of information. But they're different than beta weights. Uh, semi-partial, what SPSS calls part correlations, these are semi-partial correlations. Uh, they're different to beta weights. They have a different interpretation. They have a different implication in a regression context. Partial correlations are always larger than part correlations. I think that's somewhat counterintuitive, but uh, these are where the partial correlations are. This is the correlation between DJW and uh, AFI independent of the effects of the other independent variables on DJW as well as excluding the effects of the independent variables on the dependent variable. Again, I'll, I'll do a separate video on part and partial correlations. Here we've, in the last section of the table, we've got collinearity, collinearity statistics, tolerance and variance inflation. 
Uh, in my opinion, you only need tolerance because variance inflation factor is a function, basically, of tolerance. Or you can say that they're both.